shoulder that he injured during the McNeese game last week. And there's your proof. Tough to play in khakis. <laughs> He's all smiles, though. Eastern Kentucky 4-4 four four on this young season. They're now in the eighth sun. They had five wins last year. Coming off of a lost Friday, James Madison. They scored 97, uh, allowed 97. And right off the bat, Cooper Robb gets a bucket on the tip. This is a high-tempo pressure team in style run by A.W. Hamilton. They want the tempo to be uh, the fastest you've seen. And that might just play into Tennessee's hands. But right off the bat, Javon Meshack turns it over. Colonels 1-2 and two on the road this season. They lead the A-Sun in scoring better than 83 points a game. Uros Popcic with the deny up top. Last year, this EKU team was third in the country in three-point attempts. They'd love to put it up from deep. Shot clock late and a leaning three from Tayshaun Comers off the mark. And the rebound checked down by their big Isaiah Kozart. EK, you kind of stole one right off the tip. Yeah, well, they like to play the what they call the fastest 40 minutes in basketball. If you think about styles, you think about uh, Mike Anderson and Nolan Richardson when they were at Arkansas, what Sharka Smart's bringing back to Marquette, Rick Pitino uh, with Coach Hamilton being a Kentucky guy. And you see their goals, whether it's scoring, three-point shots, assists, steals, forced turnovers, deflections. They are going to play fast, and they're going to do it for the entire game. Meshack picked up a foul a moment ago. Here's Plopchitz looking inside now. What does Tennessee look like without Santiago Vescovi? Well, they have one less shooter. The good news for them is that they have multiple guys who can knock down the shot from the perimeter. And in this game particularly, they're going to have an advantage on the interior whenever they choose to take advantage. Rick Barnes was looking forward to this matchup, saying, you know, we get to see another style tonight. Moreno fires from three. Got Woo! it. And as Michael Moreno, preseason all-conference in the A-Sun, he's out of Scott County High School, the same high school A.W. Hamilton, his coach, was a great player for him. Rick Barnes is not happy. He'll go to the bench immediately. Well, we talk about that style, right? The best time to score is in transition. Not bad defense by Kamwa, but like you said, you've got to know the scouting report. Michael Moreno, sixth in the A-Sun, three-point field goal percentage around 40.4. And so Coach Rick Barnes is basically still fuming from what I saw him practice yesterday, Tom Hart. Yeah, he was kind of laughing with us. He's, uh, I had to create some conflict to practice. And, and he's a coach that knows, yes, they're off to a great start. They're 7-1. and one. They've won six in a row. They did great in the uh, Bahamas tournament. But here's a guy who's been the Naismith Coach of the Year, been a four straight NCAA tournament appearance. I get the feeling, Fish, that he knows that the ceiling for this team is national championship, and so he's going to be as demanding as he can be throughout the season. That's a great call, Tom. And you think about a game like Eastern Kentucky, and you see the record is 4-4, four and four, and obviously James Madison, they had a tough go with that, but we saw what James Madison did versus Virginia uh, just the other night. And so he's trying to coach his team to continue to get better and that's what he's trying to do tonight. They go to James, who's off the mark, but the follow is there. That's Julian Phillips, a talented freshman out of South Carolina. Much quicker lineup in the game right now. Olivier Kamwa can really play one through five, and he's at the quote-unquote center position right now. Devontae Blanton tried to lob it inside, and it's knocked away by Meshack. Beside Jordan James, was out with a knee injury early in the season. He comes back. Vescovy goes out. Still not at full strength. But good to have James and his length back on the floor. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Tennessee. A.W. Hamilton is in his fifth season as a head coach at Eastern Kentucky. He was a Kevin Keats assistant at North Carolina State. And a longtime head coach at Hargrave Military Academy. Wasted no time was the OBC coach of the year. He said, I'm the most blessed man in basketball. He's been through so much fought through his own cancer diagnosis which is notable here during v week had to deal with the death of his brother over the summer but he's back home in eastern kentucky where he grew up about 40 minutes from campus and has that family surrounding him through all of those challenges shot clock late cooper rob challenge and they will not get a shot off taken away by tennessee and a shot clock violation what do you think coach rick barnes said in that timeout 
the good news is, if you're an Eastern Kentucky fan, is that what Tom just said about Coach Hamilton is displayed through his team, right? They're going to continue to fight. I watched the game where they were down 20 points uh, against Georgia State. And it was amazing. You thought that game was over with. They were able to fight and claw their way back in for a victory. They had a last-second buzzer beater from beyond midcourt to win it. Back-to-back -back turnovers for EKU. And then make it three in a row now. Two-on-one break. Ziegler has it. He'll share it. Phillips will go to the free-throw line. Phillips turned into Dr. J, didn't he? He tried to. take to. off him. The SEC logo. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you can tell, though, but we've already seen Tennessee this year. We've seen the Tennessee that knocked off Kansas and that knocked off Butler, and I thought probably their most impressive game against Gonzaga. We also saw the Tennessee team that got dominated from start to finish by Coach Tad Boyles in Colorado. And Coach Rick Barnes said something interesting. He said, it's really hard to win a game in the first five to six minutes, but you can lose a game in the first five or six minutes, and it's the reason why he called that timeout. I feel the same thing about the broadcast. How are we doing? Are we winning? We're, we're right winning now. so far. Okay. We started sideways, and we're in danger. we got to Luckily, land the plane. You, you brought us back. <laughs> Phillips has four early. He was on the all-tournament team in Atlantis, and he's been one of the most efficient players to get to the free throw line third most in the sec that's a great sign for a freshman yeah and he's he's probably got he and tom while the most potential maybe josiah jordan james is being that bucket getter when it comes late to postseason play mid-range jumper off the front of the rim rebound by eastern moreno pulled that one back and now como will let it fly tayshaun comer in and out Comer, part of a backcourt with Leland Walker, two best friends from Indianapolis. Gave Eastern two top recruits. And Cooper Robb is a Georgetown kid. Started his career at North Carolina, Charlotte. He is tough. Took two stitches in the head coming off of a concussion last game against James Madison. The doctor said uh, that it's going to take about 10 minutes for the numbing shot to work before it can stitch you up. He said, Doc, I don't have 10 minutes. Just go ahead, put him in the noggin. And he was right back out on the floor. <laughs> When right on call, you see him obviously with the steal here. And right now, the size differential is not really much between these two teams with Coach Rick Barnes going to a smaller lineup. Ziegler with the kick. Here's Kamwa. Nobody steps out in time. Offensive board, James. And that is an offensive foul. Josiah Jordan James commits his first slow start for Tennessee, trailing the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky by one at the first timeout. In SEC sports, the ifs are nonstop. If you're game day ready, if your QB stays healthy, if your team could just find a kicker, if you love the tradition, the rivalry, the edge of your seat action on and off the field we're right there with you as the official bank of the sec sorry we just can't help you with the f's in sports regions helps you raise the f in f let's talk money on monday why do nearly one million businesses choose stamps.com to mail and ship stamps.com is convenient you get the services of the post office right on your computer stamps.com saves you money with great rates from usps and ups Mail letters, ship packages, anytime, anywhere, for less, a lot less. Get our special TV offer, a four-week trial, plus postage and a digital scale. Go to stamps.com slash TV and get started today. Yeah, here we go. Here's to going further. Here's to a little recharge. And this, this battery lasts for days. I do like something special. Here's to you. Thank you. And here's to me.
about Uros Placic? Yeah, well, I think he's the silent assassin for this Tennessee team. They're undefeated with him in the lineup. Take a look here. He's the ultimate rebounder, right? Has good size, a 7'4 wingspan. I call him the enforcer because he brings toughness, but he's also a tremendous shot blocker. You see his ability to not only block shots, but alter shots. Uh, his standing reach, 9'4.75. He's also a solid screener. Coach Rick Barnes does a nice job of using screens off the ball where a lot of other coaches only screen on the ball. And he actually is a really good distributor. A lot of coaches like to put big guys in positions where they can make passes. Because of the off the ball screens, he does a nice job. And many times we call guards coaches on the floor, but I think he's a big that's a coach on the floor. He draws one, two, three, four guys and gets the hockey assist here to get a phenomenal three-point shot from Santiago Vescovi, which caused Bill Self to call a timeout on that play. I think he's underrated, and I think he's extremely valuable for this volunteer team. 59% from the floor for the big fella inside, who's the sixth seven-footer in Tennessee school history, the first since our buddy Steve Hamer played here in the early 90s. At some point tonight, I do feel like that Tennessee will take advantage of the interior. Uh, right now, they're playing more of the style of Eastern Kentucky. I think at some point, Tennessee takes advantage, and they pound the basketball inside. Eastern Kentucky now 3 for 10 from the floor. Tayshaun Comer is a freshman at a Cathedral High School in Indianapolis on the top point guards, and Jonas Adu wastes no time. And a step on the sideline for Michael Wardy in an Eastern turnover. I think Comer picks up a quick foul. So Tayshawn Comer was an Indianapolis player of the year coming out of Cathedral High School. He was recruited by Eastern. And one day he turned to A.W. Hamilton. He goes, you know my best friend, Leland Walker, that four-star guy that I played a lot with? Can we get him here? <laughs> and A.W. said, yeah, I think we can work that out. Walker had spent some time at Hargrave where A.W. learned how to be a head coach. A Tennessee turnover. Here's Rob in transition and a shove from John Yukamato. And that's the first and the junior out of the Detroit area. You know, when we asked Coach Hamilton, you know, what he learned uh, at being at Hargrave, and he said, you know, I got a chance to work with phenomenal players. You think about the NBA guys that have come out of there, 113 Division I players. So he's seen and been able to evaluate quality talent, and that's helping him at Eastern Kentucky as well. Had a pretty good one, Montrez Harrell, now Woo. in the NBA after dominating in the ACC back when Louisville was good. Off the mark with that jumper. What's going on with Kenny Payne's team this year, Fish? Well, I told somebody the other day, a lot of teams could have went to Maui and went 0-3. Uh -huh. Scott Nagy, obviously phenomenal coach over at Wright State, has been to multiple NCAA tournaments, and then you come home against Miami and Maryland. Uh, but it's going to take time. He's got to get his players and his culture in. Global fans are going to have to be patient. Tennessee turnover. Uh, cards still winless. They got Kentucky later on this month that is turnover number five kenny of course was a long time assistant under cal at kentucky before going to the knicks they lost their first you could call it tough luck their first three games of the season <laughs> they lost point, all three right? all by a single point and i think that the never apps, before happened yeah, the app state was the worst where you had a a shot that looked like it counted and you think you have your first win and find out that doesn't count but you just got to keep pushing through That was in and out. Tough luck for Eastern here early on. They're just three for 13 and one for eight from deep. Nice. Inside. And Olivia Kamwa makes it go. Coming off a 20 point performance against Alcorn City. He was perfect. Seven for seven from the free throw line. Yukamato drives, has it rejected. And pulled down by the talented freshman Julian Phillips. Yeah, with Adu and Plopich. Plopich, they've got two guys who can give them rim protection. Adu's little jump hook was off the mark, and then a foul in the backcourt. 
charge to Tyreek Key. I love the opportunity here in the secondary break. It's before you have a chance to allow the weak side help to really get established. And once the primary break wasn't there, I thought it was a nice pass by Adu to the interior to Olivier Combo. Eastern had the early lead in this game, now trailing by Deuce. They're just 1-36 and 36 all time against SEC opponents. The lone win came against Auburn in 1955. Tennessee extending the pressure a little bit. Step back three, Leland Walker. He's just one for his last 12 now, and that includes a couple of games where he went 0 for 5. A better shooter than that, but he's in a bit of a cold spell. Now Ziegler. Adu doubled. Nice pass out of it. And a kick wide open three. That leaves Adu open on the weak side, but he misses again from point blank range. Not bad offense, though, that time by Tennessee. Wing three, no, but a foul charged to Kamwa. And the Colonels will have three free throws coming their way after the break. Um, Colonels have missed their last five. They had a chance to get some points from the free throw line when we return. On a confrontational fansville by Dr. Pepper. Mm. <clears throat> oh, what's up, guys? We want to talk to you about State not making the playoff. Yeah, tough season, but I'm fine. That's just it. You're not taking it hard enough. What? I'm upset. Why haven't you posted one insane rant on the message boards? I keep reliving the Southern game over and Guys, over. it's just a game. A bunch of kids with the ball. Put down that Dr. Pepper. Maybe there's more to life. Ah, he's lost it! Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Hey, Peloton, step into your power. Let's go. Ah, you didn't come to work out. You came to out work. Let's get it. Yo. Boom. Come on, you got this. Every day, man, the hey, no challenge, no change. The thing goes. Let's go. Get up to two hundred dollars off accessories. Terms apply. In my world, numbers are everything. But my most important stat, my sleep quality. The new Climate 360 Smart Bed actively cools, warms, and effortlessly responds to me. Smart sleepers get 28 minutes more restful sleep a night. Game-changing sleep, only from Sleep Number. ButcherBox delivers grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Receive your special offer today. Well, after 73 years in the Ohio Valley Conference, Eastern Kentucky left for the A-Sun a couple of years ago. And so far, their offense has been a big hit in the Atlantic Sun. First in the league in scoring, first with nearly five blocks a game. They lead the league in steals at nearly 10 a game. And second in rebounding. A.W. Hamilton wants a lot of possessions, and they play a style that usually gets that. Well, you think about what he's done since he's been there already. You mentioned it earlier, the runs that he made with Kevin Keats at North Carolina State University where they were able to knock off number two Arizona and, and, and Duke in North Carolina. What a nice run that was with the Wolfpack. And he's got him a nice recruiting class in now, and he's just continuing to chip away. And he will get it. He will continue to build it. You think about the style that he plays, uh, it, it makes it difficult because not everyone's playing that style. Matter of fact, many people do not play that style anymore because of the positionless basketball and so many people being able to handle the basketball, but they haven't given up on it and have had some success. And to the free throw line goes Deshaun Jackson. He's from just up the road in Lexington out of Frederick Douglass High School, which is Turned into a pipeline for Mark Stoops in the Kentucky football program. Three guys on that roster from Frederick Douglass, including the fantastic freshman wide receiver Dane Key. Another one coming for Jackson. His mom played hoops at Indiana State. His dad played college ball at Lindsey Wilson. And his sister was a volleyball player in college. And Jackson's got another one coming after being fouled on a three. Uh, even though they came up short in that loss to Western Kentucky, he had a career best at that time, 16 points. And you, you can just tell that style that we talked about. It is relentless 
uh, by Eastern Kentucky. For 40 minutes, they're going to test every pass, every entry pass, every dribble. They want to be handsy, and they want to throw you off offensively. Pretty basketball. Wow, that's a point-blank look for a Richmond native, Isaiah Cozart, who started his career at Western Kentucky. They get a chance to put the press on a little bit. Talk with Hamilton today. He said it's not necessarily about turnovers, but if our press is effective, it means you're not getting into your offense until late. And then we figure you just have to run a quick set, and we can force you into a bad look. Big time block by Isaiah Kozar. I actually love this for Tennessee because it prepares you for what you could potentially see uh, in the NCAA tournament. You mentioned Isaiah Kozart and the job that he's done in three years at Western Kentucky from 2019 to 2022 and a veteran senior out of Richmond, Kentucky. But you think about if they were to face a Marquette in the NCAA tournament or a team that's got St. John's and Mike Anderson. You know, this is great preparation. It shows their weaknesses. How about Ziegler having the uh, awareness to get that shot up? The end result is a foul by Jackson. Tennessee has made just one of its last eight. Now, Hamilton noted, like when he first got there, their pace was breakneck. It was the quickest tempo in all of college basketball. Last year they had to deal with a ton of injuries. This year they're trying to get some new guys accustomed to it. And with some young point guards, it takes a little while to have the trust to run the tempo. Yeah, that's right. And the biggest objective and I would say challenge for him when he gets his guys is, is them just being in condition and being able to do this for 40 minutes. A big time three by Tyree Key. Indiana State transfer. Key coming off of a 11 point performance against Alcorn. Ziegler with the takeaway. Push ahead. Kamwa. Ooh, that was dangerous. Slipped just a little bit. And now Ziegler will reset. Well, he is a burst. Good pass. Key again. Lobchitz kept that one alive for Phillips to find. Seems like Key's one of those guys that just wants to make every single shot, as most people do. But Coach Rick Barnes wants him to be more aggressive and to take more shots. Yeah, he was saying after the Alcorn game, he said that he's got to recognize that when we run a play, especially if it's a play that's supposed to come to you, it's your job to shoot the basketball. Right. I mean, is there any better information? You see him working with Coach or working with Julian Phillips there, just continuing to stay on it. I mean, yesterday in practice, he did not let his foot up off the gas pedal. <laughs> All right, I, I don't want you to give away state secrets, but just peel the curtain back a little bit for viewers who don't get a chance to watch a college basketball practice. I'm not talking about a shoot-around where it's a, usually very casual, but the intensity in the practice in the middle of a season. Sure. Well, he, he's just so detail-oriented, right? Whether it's a position that you're supposed to be in or uh, a pass that should have been made from a different angle. And there's ultimate accountability. But as Coach Hamilton said, and he and Coach Barnes have that in common, it's because they care about their players. Yeah. And it's just like if you were in a family. Your family is going to hold you accountable because they care about you. And that's something that Coach Rick Barnes and Coach Hamilton both have in common. Volunteers with a three-point lead. The lead Friday for Brooklyn will take on Maryland as Ziegler commits a foul. And non-conference gets tougher the rest of the way. All the remainder, remainders are ranked teams. Well, they'll get tested. Uh, not only Maryland, but Arizona. Coach Kevin Willard doing a nice job. He's brought the same physical grit and toughness that he had at Seton Hall. I think they'll look at this this tape and they'll get excited because they'll you know they like to run 2-2-1 zone and match up. Scott's a shooter, Hakeem Hart. I think physical toughness, Dante Scott. And so you're right. Uh, you know their schedule is going to turn up even more. How do you know all those guys? Those aren't even SEC teams. How did you pull that out? Because <laughs> they played last night. Oh, tough okay. loss to Wisconsin. I thought you were watching my game from Arkansas. Wow, Where's what a game. The... Man, Hart goes out to Trevin Brazil as well yeah. with that ACL injury for Arkansas. He's out for the rest of the year. The Missouri transfer, you were so impressed with his athleticism that he flashed in Maui and being a key component to that team. Great on-ball defense 
It turns into a foul from Devontae Blanton. He's the one guy you just can't afford to get in foul trouble, averaging right. 17, 18 points per game. Uh, he's a guy that's going to continue to have to manufacture points, and because of his ability to manufacture points, he allows other players to play off of him much better. I like this switch to the matchup zone just to throw Tennessee off a little bit now that they've been pressuring. Extra pass, open three for Phillips. That's an air ball, but look who's there. The Rhodes Plopchit. You get featured by Damian Fishback, you're going to have a big moment. <laughs> Man, checks in the mail, Tom Hart. He is the enforcer, though. He knows how to win, you know, and that was anybody's rebound, but he uses that wingspan he positions. You know, a lot of times we talk about basketball IQs with guards. I think he's got one of the better basketball IQs of any bigs in college basketball. He was perfect from the floor in the Alcorn game, six for six. Pumped in a dozen points. He's got three here early on. Tennessee leads by four. You know what they're saying in Serbia right now? <laughs> What's that? Dobro, Bratic. Dobro. What's Dobro? Just good job, brother. Good okay. job. All right. Does that phrase, does that qualify me for speaking that language? Yeah, just oh, that? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Contested drive will result in a foul on Deshaun Jackson. That's his second. You spent some time over there? I did. Incredible food, nice people, great country, and they love their hoops over there. Hoops, coffee, and that's all I can say on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm ready to book my ticket. We got a double header for you on Saturday. Oscar Shibway in 16th ranked Kentucky play host to Yale at one at Rupp. Then 6 and 2 Ole Miss takes on Valpo at the pavilion looking to get back on track. After starting the season 6 and 0, oh, should be a great afternoon of hoops. How about Kermit Davis's team after being besieged by injuries last year? Got off to a great start this year. Yeah, I thought that uh, tough loss uh, at Memphis. Deshaun Ruffin uh, inserted back into the lineup. They need to continue to get him healthy. But I think it's the deep, deepest team that Coach Kermit Davis has had at Ole Miss. I well, like their hold team. Hold on a second. How many SEC teams is Penny going to play this year? He's Ole Miss. <laughs> I think he's got Auburn In coming Atlanta. up this weekend. Yeah. And then I got their game at Alabama next Tuesday. <laughs> Already is he, is Penny trying to win an SEC title? <laughs> it's not allowed. That's not how it works. Well, they've got a nice squad again. Kendrick Davis. Uh, one of the best point guards in the country transferred from SMU. Keep your eyes on that young guard. It's almost like Tennessee's got settled in here, yep. don't you think? They're doing what we talked about, using their side on the their size on the interior. How come they get to wear quarter zips and we can't? <laughs> Who do we talk to? Can we be cash? I mean, Joey Stats over here. He's casual. Good, it's, good enough, <laughs> it's good enough for like Peyton that. on Monday Night Football, right? <laughs> Comer knocks down another free throw rated the 40th best point guard coming out of high school. They're going to trap Ziegler in the backcourt. Easier said than done. And it turns into an advantage for Tennessee. And we got a jump ball. It'll be Tennessee basketball. Well, Zakai Ziegler on this play... He was slowing down, and a lot of times offensive players will do that, especially if you're a smaller guard, to get the defender to kind of run over you and get a foul. Yeah. Well, that was the wrong decision in this particular situation because it allowed Eastern Kentucky to trap him. I would tell you something happened when we were running that replay. Uros Plavcic called this baseline out of bounds play. He looked over to Barnes. He flashed the number he wanted to run and gave him a hand signal, and Rick Barnes looked at him and just nodded. said, yeah, go ahead, let's run that. <laughs> like, to your point, like, here's a – Naismith National Coach of the Year. Yeah. The trust that he has in Plopchich, a guy who's been in his system, to know what the right play is. You know, we ought to have a surprise for, for our viewers and have somebody that played for Coach Barnes before tell stories like that. You, you think we can get that done, Tom? Might be SEC after dark, but, yeah, we <laughs> could. <laughs> maybe bring him on in the second half. Tell you know, you. Somebody else that's played for Coach Barnes, maybe. That's a great idea. If we're going to get somebody. 
Can whether you pull played, that off? Whether they played at Tennessee or Texas or Clemson or Providence wow. or a teammate at Lenore Ryan, whatever it was, it's, I feel like to get the most information about Rick Barnes, it's got to be a point guard. You yeah, got to be a point guard. Comer got by Ziegler Woo! off the window Tough. to flex. Comer's got a half dozen. You know, a guy like Tayshaun Comer embraces playing in this atmosphere and the challenge of going against a guy like Zakai Ziegler. Absolutely. Well, and, and right now, Zakai is, is he's playing with the defense too much. He's fast enough where he can just go through it. And speaking of go through it, Tayshaun, I see you, Tay. Mr. Comer just knocking down off the window with a beautiful finish. We got action. The Bespoke Post, man. I only deliver one high-quality package from Bespoke Post. And it's all been tested by me. Discover the best small brands in the world at BespokePost.com. Everything you've seen me do was made possible by what you don't see. We all have the strength to see what's possible. It's up to us to unlock it. Tony, be your strongest. The SEC and SEC Network thank our official corporate sponsors for their continued support of our student-athletes during every championship season. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. Hey, Bell, this championship time! The Patriots take on the Cardinals. TV's most epic competition show is back. MTV's groundbreaking series, The Challenge, is better than ever. And the world is raving. I'm freaking stoked! The Challenge is going to be one for the record books. So ride along for a new and exciting era of the show. Because this season is going to be one of the best. That is a week! Catch all new episodes of The Challenge Rider Dies tonight at 8, 7 central. Watch on MTV. What do you get when you mix too many drinks with an angry letter to Santa? One very original holiday movie. You know that letter you wrote to Santa? All your wishes are coming true. I work here with my bully, dear Santa. You think this is a game? Gabourey Sidibe, Loretta Devine, and Gal Mitchell. I'm a magical elf. <laughs> All I didn't want for Christmas premieres tonight at 8. All part of VH1's Naughty or Nice. Happy holidays from Rocky Top. We were caroling during the break in Tennessee <laughs> with a three-point lead. Volunteers have gone a little cold. They've made just two of their last ten shots. What's Eastern doing on the defensive end? Well, we talked about Tennessee's lack of offensive efficiency at times being a challenge. And right now, Tennessee's just trying to figure out the best way to score against this defense. The answer to your question is they're changing defenses. They're pressuring them in the full court, making Tennessee play 94 feet. You don't have a guy like Santiago Vescovi in the game right now, so that's one less threat that they typically would have in the transition break to knock down three-point shots and to make correct passes. Yeah. And then they're switching it up and going zone at times, too. Right now they're in a 1-2-2 uh, kind of three-quarter court pressure, but still trapping out of it. Neither team shooting the ball well from deep, but combined three for 20 reminds me of the start I saw last night in Fayetteville where Arkansas was held at just 21 points in the first half mm -hmm. and uh, UNC Greensboro nearly pulled off their first ever top 25 win. Yeah, I thought that was impressive by UNC Greensboro, but equally impressive by Arkansas because when you had Trevor Brazil go down, Nick Smith Jr. just now getting back into the flow, they found a way to win. Uh, folks in the SEC are going to love watching Nick Smith Jr. Woo. If uh, I guess if you're an Arkansas fan. I mean, he is going to be the next great superstar out of this league. Josiah Jordan James with the turnaround. Think they like that look against the zone. The 15 footer. And they don't mind it. Uh, Plus, just on the particular play, giving them another opportunity with an offensive rebound. I, I just think Tennessee's got to. You see they're dominating on the offensive boards, so that's a sign. I just think they need to force the basketball inside, use their size, and be dominant on the interior. Eastern at 26% from the floor. Tennessee just 20%. James jumps the passing lane, and 
Brown will go to the free throw line. Tennessee third in the country in steals. It's a tenth foul on Eastern, so balls in the double bonus with 6.56 left in the half. And Devontae Blanton, who's been magnificent for them all season, but especially over the last four games, giving them 21 points a game, picks up his second. And the one thing Tennessee's really good about is turning your water off if you're the best player on the other team. You look at Wilson and his struggles when they played against Kansas. Uh, if you're the best player on the other team, you better be prepared for a tough night uh, when you play against the Tennessee Volunteers. Yeah, both Jalen Wilson and Grady Dick had tough shooting nights, and they've been great for Kansas all year. Jayhawks were held to just 50 points. It's the lowest total for a Kansas basketball team since November of 2014. Whew. It'll be a big one this weekend, by the way, in Columbia, Missouri. They'll reignite the border war. Mizzou and Kansas on ESPN. How about the Tigers? One of the last to be undefeated yeah, in college of, basketball. Well, we got 12 undefeateds, right? And Missouri leading the SEC in scoring. They play a fun brand of basketball. Another miss for Tennessee. Neither team has led this game by more than five. It's just been kind of stuck in first gear. Fish, when's the last time you drove a stick ship? Mm, it's been a while. Blocking Actually, took my driver's you. test in a stick ship. Well, that's bold. Tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> it's it bold. Maybe that's why I felt. Maybe, maybe that's why I failed it two or three times. <laughs> Those rolling stops. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? You get it right. I feel like you should be graded on a curve if you take you it know, on a stick ship. No doubt. Ship. Well, hitting the car the second time didn't work out well. <laughs> you either, hit a though. car during your driver's but, test. But you know, it, it was parallel parking. <laughs> And once I hit the car, I just lightly touched it. And so they said, you did so good. You know, I hate to fail you, but you hit a car. <laughs> Third time was charm, though. <laughs> well, they do say, you know, it is you a test. Last that hard time. <laughs> it is a driver's <laughs> test. <laughs> they don't want it to be easy. Key from deep. And the Tennessee struggles continue. Two for 13 from three. And we've seen this show before when Tennessee settles from behind the three-point line. Now, they're getting wide-open looks. But sometimes, even when you're getting those looks, you got to be more patient and try to get it on the interior just because you're bigger, better, and stronger in the paint area. Adu and Key are the only volunteers who have made a three. Here's a deep one from Blanton. That was way off. And then there's the other side of the coin. Sometimes, as coaches will tell you, son, there's a reason you're so wide open. <laughs> Plopchich looking to pass. Gives it up to James for a 10-footer. And Plopchich picks it up. Telling you, under the radar, he's that guy. You watch him in the Gonzaga exhibition game. You watch him in big games. He's a difference maker. Timeout taken by Easter. Largest lead of the game for Tennessee. Yeah, well, you see Euros here had 13 points, four assists in an exhibition game against Drew Timmy and Gonzaga. I think he's going to have to play a huge role as they face the likes of an Arizona as well. I understand what you were saying earlier about him being a guy who could move the ball around. But when that possession started, he was guarded by a 6'7", 200-pound post player. Sure. Why not just power dribble and dunk on the dude? Or just be a little bit more aggressive on your own? Well, I think at times he becomes too unsafe selfish you know we call him the enforcer because i think he's a tremendous teammate but at times yeah his team needs him just like coach rick barnes is talking to key they need him to be a little bit more selfish if you can go and score on the interior because you're bigger stronger and better then go do that that's something that will occur as the season goes on he's a big physical player seven feet tall 250 pounds I like the enforcer. We, we don't have a whole lot more of those in, in college basketball. There's a lot of really nice players out yeah, there. Yeah, no Bill Lambeers. Uh, or... he, he could be playing in the 80s, in the early 90s. That style yeah. played back then. A good matchup with he and Isaiah Kozart, who's going to be a load to handle in the A-Sun this year. Lopchic gets switched out. Guarding the 6'7", Moreno. And now picks up the point guard. Here's Moreno for three. If you can switch one through five defensively, it's one of the reasons Tennessee's the number one defensive efficiency team in the country. There's Plopchic inside. He's kind of lost his lift 
on the entry. Here's yeah, Moreno. You got to dunk that one. That's one he wishes he could have back. But he, he heard you from over here, Tom Hart. Uh -huh. He went and scored on the – or tried to score on the interior. And, and sometimes and you see upsets in college basketball all over the place. Sometimes you just feel like it's a matter of time before we beat this team. And the focus isn't quite there. I think this is a combination of Eastern Kentucky playing well into their style and Tennessee still not feeling like that Eastern Kentucky can beat them. Hey, listen, Urosh Plavcic is a tough, tough dude. Basketball's, basketball's easy when it comes to toughness. Turned over. EKU's gone three and a half minutes without a bucket. Thought Key was going to pull a Forrest Gump and just run all the way out the tunnel or Bo Jackson. <laughs> oh, man. Tom No Filter Heart. It's your new nickname, Tom. There I love go. it. Something else Tennessee really hasn't done enough of is create offense off of their defense in this game. And it's amazing against quality teams how close you can keep the score if you simply get good looks at the basket yeah. without turning it over. Great point. And A.W. Hamilton said just that this afternoon. He said, listen, there's no secret to great basketball. We're talking about UNCG's near upset last night at Arkansas. Just get good shots. Hard to get good shots against this Tennessee defense night in and night out. They've won three straight games by an average of 21 points a game and beat Alcorn by 54 last time out. But the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky from up in Richmond off 75 are hanging in, trailing by a half dozen. Excited to do business with you, but before we sign, I gotta ask. Sure, anything. We searched you online, and maybe you can explain this. Can't believe that garbage is still coming in. That is so false. Frustrated with your online search results? Call Reputation Defender today to join tens of thousands who've improved their online reputation. Get your free reputation report card at reputationdefender.com or call 1 877 866 8555. Here, tiny can be mighty. A single call can echo through the ages. One legacy can redefine what's possible in any field. The slimmest margin can send shockwaves across the country. Greatness is in the details. And here, they just mean more. Coming up at halftime, we've got Drea, the point guard, and Pat Bradley, the shooter. We're going to talk a little SEC freshman on the hardwood. We'll give out some hardware on the football field. But for now, TB, what are you seeing in the first half? Well, I got a question for Tom Hart. What, what's more challenging, Fishback's parallel parking abilities or Eastern Kentucky shooting from a three-point line? 7% right now. Back to y'all. <laughs> Shooter, that's a great question. I mean, EKU is one for 14 from three, but they put no dents in any Pontiac so far. Like, no harm, no foul, and they have a chance to learn just like you eventually learn how to parallel park. Yeah, thank you, because I didn't hear what he said into the parallel park. There yeah. we go. You know, the shooter's going to shoot shots, and I'm sitting here wondering who would win, even though Dre was a point guard. If you got to shoot off right now in their current state, who wins? Ten shots behind the three-point line. Listen, it's, it's like a, a boxing match, all right? It doesn't matter how tough you think you are. Once it turns into a cardio competition, <laughs> Dre is running laps around it. mayshek has got another free throw coming his way. Oh, man, T.R., that's good. Important, well, hey, You know, for Pat Bradley, orange <laughs> theory is what he thinks Rick Barnes' coaching style is. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, I'm glad we, we opened it up. We kid because we care, right? We kid because we care. Eastern has three turnovers in the last four minutes. 0 for their last five. Kozark off the mark with the jump hook. He was a Kentucky Gatorade Player of the Year at Madison Central. Were you the player of the year in Kentucky? Back in your high school playing they, they days? They voted me as that, but they you know, politics me. and everything. I took it, though. Hey, I take hey, the accolade. A.W. Hamilton remembered you. He was a freshman at Scott County High School. You were out there filling up. I think his point was because he was a freshman, he wasn't on the floor. He didn't have to try and guard <laughs> Damian Fishback. <laughs> Look at him. He's still in great shape. How about that? He spoke about cardio. That was the first on Leland Walker and young man's aging like fine wine. Uh-huh. This dude. Look at that. Finger roll. And then went to Wake Forest. We played for Skip Prosser before transferring on to Marshall, where they had the baggy shorts. <laughs> we all had the baggy yeah. shorts back then. Thanks to the Fab Five. That was that was cooler than cool. 10-4 Tennessee run. And this is what Tennessee does to you. You think about the Virginias, the Villanovas. Mm. Walker banks it in. They kind of just continue to try to stretch that lead. There's a trap in midcourt. Key gets it. Good ball movement. Um, but Adu... And Kama weren't on the same page. He's a Tennessee team that last time out fish assisted on 27 of their 33 buckets. That is an inconceivable stat. Well, it shows the culture, right? Coach Hamilton said something interesting. He said, I think this team for Tennessee exemplifies the personality of Coach Rick Barnes more than any of his other teams. They're unselfish. They're disciplined. They're hardworking. They're deep. They're talented. But they do go through scoring drafts. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they got the defense to shut others down. Last five halves, Tennessee has held the opponent to four of 47 from deep. Hmm. That's a .085%. Ziegler commits his second. Well, they say defense travels, and we talked about their upcoming schedule a little bit. They, they had better travel as they face Maryland and Arizona. Uh, Maryland in Brooklyn. And then on the road out in Tucson, that Arizona team came here last year loaded with future NBA players. What a great job by Tommy Lloyd and Josiah Jordan James replaces Meshack. You know, Walker rated as a top 40 point guard, ranked 30, 39th best point guard in the nation following his season last year at Hargrave Military Academy. I think he's got a nice upside. I, I can't wait to see how he continues to expand his game as they get closer to A-Sun play. The first four-star ever to sign with Eastern. He was the 39th-ranked point guard, and his good buddy Tayshaun Comer was the 40th-ranked point guard. Well, the one thing I like about him is what you want in the point guard position, and I remember being at... Billy Donovan's practice one year when I, when he was at Florida. How you old always, are you? Oh, I'm 36. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at least that's that's what I'm gonna tell everybody. That's a good median, median number. That's right. But w when I was at the practice, Billy Donovan he kept saying something that always stuck with me. You have to have someone who has the ability to put the defense at a disadvantage. And candidly, that's something that Tennessee struggles with at some times. You know, somebody that gets by the defense and puts the defense in the rotation. Do you think they miss Kennedy Chandler in that regard? Absolutely. Well, you had two guys who could do that last year in both him and Zakai. Here's Key, open from the wing. And the big-time offensive board and a putback by Phillips. And that's where Tennessee's dominating, dominating right now. 13 offensive rebounds. Uh, and they have 14 points off of those rebounds. Kama with the block and then a mistake push from Yukamata. This is what you call a soft miss, right? And, and, and as a shooter, even when you miss, if it's soft, you give your teammates a chance to rebound. Yeah. Otherwise, it clangs off the back iron. No doubt. 20 feet away. <laughs> 
So Phillips, freshman out of Blythewood, South Carolina, played a year at Link Academy in Missouri. McDonald's All-American. At 25 in Atlantis against USC. Fukumaru, by the way, picked up his third. So he'll sit the rest. Yeah, Julian Phillips, I, I noticed at practice yesterday where I think he can have a sweet spot. And he loves the mid-range game. Still struggling from behind the three-point line. Yeah, just 3 of 16. But he can live from the mid-range game. He's athletic enough. His, his shot is good enough. And he's going to shoot it much better from the three-point line. Just got to get confidence and get better looks. Moreno saw Tom Sokoviak open, so he wanted to feed him. Best SID in the business. Rick Martin has a scouting report even on his SID, doesn't he? <laughs> Rick Martin has a scouting report on everybody that steps foot in the arena. Uh huh. Including you, right? What was his statement? What, what are you doing with all that money you're making, <laughs> yeah, Tom Hart? Right. He wanted to know the scouting report on you. Apparently, he didn't know I was on a 6 a.m. out of Fayetteville this Ooh. morning. Good finish by Kamwa. Did it leave on time? Left early, got here early. Ooh, that's all that matters. You had a great day. Simple things in life, right, Fish? No doubt. Volunteers yeah. only shooting 24% in this game. Yeah, danger zone for Eastern Kentucky right now. You mentioned their struggles shooting. I don't expect that to last for the entire game, and the Volunteers now continuing to stretch this lead. That's an offensive foul on Phillips. It's his second. Yet, to your point, Eastern, two for 16 from three. Well, they had break Leland that Walker waiting to take that charge. Yeah, yeah. And, and we actually talked about that with Coach Barnes, that blocking charge call, still the most challenging play to call for officials today. And it continues to change, whether you're in legal guarding position, whether you have to be stationary. Still one of the hardest plays to call in college basketball. Now Barnes, head of the rules committee, he said he'd love to see the lane widen and that that would make the block charge call easier. Yeah, that would come, I would assume, with an enlarged restricted arc as they have in the NBA. Eastern Kentucky rushing it a little bit right now, playing too fast. Just like you rushed parallel parking. That's what Pat Bradley said. <laughs> oh, man. Which was uglier than shooting you can't or tell your parallel. I thought we were going for transparency here. Supposed to be a family conversation, man. Ten turnovers for Eastern. Truth tree. Just, it's just us here. <laughs> Obviously, Tennessee wanting to try to get the last shot, not to allow Eastern Kentucky much momentum. They have to go a little bit faster, though, against this matchup zone. Ball's getting stagnant. Clocking out at two. And James fires a contested three. Rebound. Kamwa couldn't get a handle on it. One second left. And the heave is wide. You know what is more interesting than this first half? What's that? Pat Bradley's pocket square. <laughs> I can't even see it, and I guarantee you it's got more action than this one. 32-21. Drea, save us, please. <laughs> I do have to admit, I chose Pat Bradley's pocket square. Welcome into the SEC Halftime Report. Drea Carter, Pat, ba Pat Bradley, one of the greatest shooters Arkansas has ever seen. However, when we talk about shooting, Eastern Kentucky, yeah. 2 of 17 from beyond the arc. PB, what have you seen from that Tennessee defense? Well, Tennessee is the best uh, uh, three-point shooting defensive team we have in the SEC. They hold teams to 22% each game shooting three. So, uh, they're connected well defensively. They communicate well, good anticipation. They don't move on the catch. They're moving on the pass. Okay. And so they're getting out, run guys off uh, off the three-point line. That's what we expect from a Coach Rick Barnes team. Mm -hmm. That defense, that energy and effort is always going to be there from the defensive end. Well, you heard uh, Damian Fishback talking about Tennessee's offense having that yeah. same chemistry. But you're not seeing it translate as much with points per game. Seventh in the league in points per game for Tennessee. What are you seeing from them on the offensive end? The guys talked a little bit about it. Kennedy Chandler not back. Yep. And he is a guy that can break down the defense off the dribble. I've always said dribble penetration is the most devastating move in all basketball. You know you're a point Absolutely. guy, right? The ability to break down a defense when things, you know, when your offense does break down. But Tennessee, again, they're known for hard cuts, hard screens, play movement, ball movement. Uh, one thing they could do when they're not shooting it well, because 
They, they're 2 out of 15 from the three-point line. Um, they are such a good rebounding team. Yeah. Defensively, get out in transition. Get a few easy buckets that way on the offensive glass. So you can neutralize your, your lack of shooting. You see the big fella, um, Plopchich, be able to take control in the paint. Those types of things can help them when they're not shooting well. Well, you mentioned some of that rebounding, and this is Tennessee's offensive rebounding, 14 second-chance points on the half. Mm. Is it effort? Is it skill? Is it athleticism? How are they cleaning up the glass so consistently? Well, it's, it's certainly the effort, and that's one thing Coach Barnes is intense, practices, shoot-arounds. He's going to get it from you. He's going to get it out of you. If you don't, you're going to be sitting next to him on the bench, have no need for you. So, But that's one thing that... Uh, you know, he coaches, and he teaches, and he, and he wants those guys to take advantage of. Did you snag offensive rebounds and, as a Razorback? No, 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 no. I Just didn't three go, pointers. I, I Just three pointers. Any, I went top of the key to top of the key. Got that it. was my territory. Not right in there. the paint. Not in the <laughs> no, paint no, at no. all. Uh, well, we'll see if Tennessee can hold on to the lead and extend that home win streak to 22. But we have a lot more basketball coming up. Kentucky women taking on Minnesota at 8. Florida men against the top five team in the nation, Ooh. Connecticut. That's nine Eastern on ESPN2. And Vanderbilt, the Commodores, taking on Pittsburgh right here after this one. We also had some action earlier today. The Georgia Bulldogs trying to bounce back from a loss against NC State, taking on Mercer at Stegman Coliseum. First quarter, Georgia up 9-0. Bulldogs on the fast break off a missed shot. That's Audrey Warren. Chloe Chapman to Jordan Isaacs for the bucket and one. Georgia started the game, PB, on a 13-0 run. However, the story of the game was that player right there, Diamond Battles, hitting the jumper. That was her 1,000th career point later in the second quarter. Watch Battles. Snake dribble, split the defense, and hit another jumper. Georgia wins by 40. Diamond Battles, 15 points. We got a lot more coming. That's Olivier Kamwa. With the layup, he's in the paint where Pat Bradley never was. <laughs> we'll be right back. Too bad. Around here, Saturdays don't just happen. Saturdays are in the details. It takes the X's, the O's, and the T's. The bounces, the flips, and the flights. The bulldog, the bear, the beads of sweat. It takes this moment and this moment. When anything can happen, every detail counts. Pfizer and the SEC are teaming up to remind fans to get an updated COVID-19 booster shot. Show the world what it means to be an SEC fan at Fanatics.com. The largest assortment of officially licensed SEC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. When the details take precedence, the rest falls perfectly into place. We strip away everything but the essential, and what we're left with are thoughtful bedrooms for modern living. Thuma. This is a community of selfless leaders and lifelong learners, backed by Orange every step of the way. This is the University of Tennessee. We give our all to discovery, to creativity, to each other. The world needs volunteers now more than ever, willing to step forward, light the way, and do whatever it takes. It takes a volunteer. What do you get when you mix too many drinks with an angry letter to Santa? One very original holiday movie. You know that letter you wrote to Santa? All your wishes are coming true. I work here with my bully. Dear Santa, you think this is a game? Gabourey Sidibe, Loretta Devine, and Kel Mitchell. I'm a magical elf. <laughs> All I didn't want for Christmas premieres tonight at 8. All part of VH1's Naughty or Nice. My name is Austin James. As a musician living with diabetes, finger sticks can be a real challenge. That's why I use the Freestyle Libre 2 system. With a painless one-second scan, I know my glucose numbers without finger sticks. Now I'm managing my diabetes better, and I've lowered my A1C from 8.2 to 6.7. Take the mystery out of managing your diabetes and lower your A1C. Now you know. Try it for free at freestylelibre.us. But there's Jackson. You're seeing his ability to run the floor. Brandon Miller! Under the basket, Jaden Bradley going to work. And 
the follow by Phillips. Abram. Yes! A dagger! It's slammed home by Traor! Lindsay! How about the freshman getting it done? He hit right in on it. Yes, so return to sender. Wallace, big three, got it! Woo! Pretty bad. And Smith has got some nice vision. He's 20-20. Wow! We love seeing freshman stars come into the SEC. Drake Carter, Pat Bradley, PB. We just saw a whole host of them. Julian Phillips tonight for Tennessee. He's a freshman, eight points, eight rebounds. But where are some other freshmen in the league that stand out to you? Well, we saw Gigi Jackson, right? Six foot nine, runs effortlessly, can shoot the three, gets out in transitions, really good shot blocker. Brandon Miller, Alabama is averaging 18 points a game, second in the SEC. He's another fantastic shooter up towards over 40% from the three-point line he's shooting. And then how about my hogs? The Arkansas trio of Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black, and Jordan Walsh. Uh, Those guys are extremely impressive because of how aggressive they are. You see, Nick Smith Jr. comes downhill. He's long enough and athletic enough to finish over the rim. Uh, Jordan Walsh is another guy like that, has all the skill set. Anthony Black from a point guard position, six foot seven, Drea. I haven't seen a point guard better than him in all of college basketball. You may have had a guy had a better game, but what he does from a defensive standpoint, great vision. He's a pass first guy. Uh, that's a special group that they have there in Fayetteville. Well, I want to give you a chance to brag on your hogs for just a second, a little bit more, <laughs> because I love you. Picked out your pocket square, give it's, you a chance. But for them to all play so well together and the yeah. chemistry that they have, how special is that? Well, it is, and it's, they're unselfish. I've been around the team a, a little bit. The chemistry is there. They don't care who gets the credit. They just all want to win. And when you can establish that, that level of unselfishness and chemistry, then uh, everyone's going to get a chance to shine. Yeah, that's special. And, uh, yeah. you know, you got a chance to shine. I got a chance to shine. <laughs> uh, Tennessee shining right now. So we'll see if they can continue to get it done. This is Tyreek Key looking a little bit more like Pat Bradley stepping behind Ooh. that three point line, knocking it down. Football is the game of life, and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. That's why I think, you know, football is on the right path. Community with football is very accepting and loving to people who enjoy the sport. Win or lose, they do it as a family. Why pay over a hundred bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want, with all the entertainment you love, for the price that cable can't be. Try free at FuboTV.com. When we started our business, we were paying like an arm and a leg for the postage. I remember setting up ship station. I think it was just like one or two clicks. Everything was up and running. I was printing out labels and <laughs> saving money. Ship station saves us so much time. It makes it really easy and seamless. Pick an order, print everything you need, slap the label onto the box, and it's ready to go. Our cost for shipping, like we're cut in half, just like that. ShipStation, the number one choice of online sellers. Go to ShipStation.com slash TV and get two months free. Open up to Tommy John this holiday season. Choose feature-packed underwear and intimates to upgrade your day every day. Try them now risk-free with our best pair guarantee and experience what confidence feels like. Go to TommyJohn.com now and get 20% off your first order with code TV20. Skincare shouldn't be this complicated. Luckily, my Curology Dermatology provider got to know my skin, then selected three clinically proven ingredients to prescribe a custom formula made for me. Try Curology for free today. Here, one extra rep leads to one extra inch. One extra hour to one extra record. One extra voice to one extra decibel. Extra intelligence to extra impact. In a conference of difference makers, one extra makes all the difference. Because here, it just means more. Four.
four finalists. One dream. Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams. And the winner is... Well, Thursday night, tune in to the Top 10 Heisman Trophy finalist show. That's Thursday at 9 o'clock Eastern. And then the Heisman Trophy ceremony, Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I know we have some Tennessee fans tuning in since the volunteers are playing on the hardwood. These two special standout talents, Hendon Hooker and Jalen Hyatt, who found each other all season long. They are up for a couple of big awards as well. Tune in. See if they snag them. We got Jonas Adu stepping up, knocking it down from three. Tennessee made two threes. That was the second one. Some more second half action. Looks like Hooker to Hyatt. Swimming takes a combination of effort and focus. Every breath, every stroke, Every movement must be deliberate. One day you realize, instead of feeling tired, you feel strong. That's what Regents Private Wealth Management provides. We're intentional about every detail of your financial plan, so you can embrace life's moments while planning for your future. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. ButcherBox delivers grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get free ground beef for life when you sign up. This is a community of selfless leaders and lifelong learners, backed by Orange every step of the way. This is the University of Tennessee. We give our all to discovery, to creativity, to each other. The world needs volunteers now more than ever, willing to step forward, light the way, and do whatever it takes. It takes a volunteer. And guys here, game day is every day. Our uh, training doesn't stop. Do it again, run it again. Round face, straight hair. Short on back and sides and long on top. Nice work, Taylor. Being a sport clip stylist takes a strong skill set. Finger curls. And strong fingers. Only the best make the uh, cut. That's sport clips. Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. I'm not ready to lose my hair. Not now. But I never thought there was a real solution. Now I use Keeps, the easiest way to keep my hair. And I can get my treatment without leaving the couch. Go to Keeps.com to learn more. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business, he relied on freshness, quality, variety, and service. He still delivered the freshest nuts, dried fruits, snacks, and sweets to families all around the country. Nuts.com. Enjoy free shipping on your first order. Welcome back to Knoxville. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Well, we promised this style to be remembered. Fast as 40. That's what Coach Hamilton told us today. And you saw that from Eastern Kentucky. They were relentless on the defensive end. He wanted his hands in there, and they definitely did that. So Tennessee struggled from the field. But what they did not struggle doing was offensively rebounding. They attacked the glass with a relentless mindset. They used their size on the interior. Multiple weapons showed you that whether it's defense, Defense to offense or offensive rebound. When the shot's not going down, they can find a way to win. If this Eastern team can play with half of the confidence of the inebriated Eastern fan that we saw in the men's room at halftime, <laughs> they're going to win this thing by 70. <laughs> this is 2 of 17 from 3. The offense for Tennessee, not great. It's fish. They got looks at the rim. They're just 6 for 13 on layups. They didn't have a single dunk in the first half with a huge size advantage. It's scoring just .842 points per possession on the EKU side. The EKU side, thanks to nine turnovers and poor shooting, they only scored on 10 of 37 possessions. Yeah, well, right now, obviously, these first five minutes are always crucial in the game, and uh, you can tell by the body language of Tennessee, they're trying to turn up the pressure a lot more. Yeah, Meshack does just that, and it turns into a foul. 
on Cooper Robb, and he commits his third three seconds in. You can feel it for the Scott County product. They're going to leave him in the game. He said, I'm a veteran. I'm smart enough not to pick up my fourth. But he had to sit for a good chunk of the first half with two. Last eight minutes of the half, Eastern was just one of ten. Tennessee was just three of 12. And if I'm Tennessee, I go right after Cooper Robb. Boom! Tyree Key with the bucket and a foul on the big man, Isaiah Kozar. That's what we call 45, 50-year-old basketball. <laughs> Grown man. Look at it. Watch the shot fake, and then look how he jumps it. Under. You know, jumps into him, draws the contact. That's that old guy that's coming to the playground. He takes off his dress socks, puts on some tennis shoes, and just goes to work. <laughs> that's key. Not going to impress you with the ton of athleticism, or, but he's going to win. Tyreek Key makes it a three-point play. That's a Sunday afternoon YMCA game. <laughs> Guy doesn't even have a membership. He just slides in the back door and says, I got next. Rob with a slip. He's had a frustrating night. Good ball movement. Rebound checked down by Kamwa. Up ahead, intercepted. Michael Moreno got it back. Moreno wants it. He'll trigger it. This is a wide open system that A.W. Hamilton runs, and you got to think from a recruiting standpoint, there's a lot of kids would love to get up and down the floor and play with this tempo. Yeah, not only the tempo, but you know you're going to get an opportunity to play. He plays a ton of guys. Mm -hmm. Tyree Key off the mark. They shoot a ton of threes. Just haven't been falling. Last year, third in the nation in three-point attempts. Moreno. And a Scott County High School picks up his second. Three-time All-State, Kentucky Mr. Basketball finalist. He scored over 2,800 points in his high school career. All right, for the folks that don't know, Scott County in Kentucky is a high school powerhouse. In Moreno's time there, they went 132 and 18. Mm. Were they that good when you were playing Kentucky high school basketball? You know... It varied from season to season, right? Yep. Uh, but the one thing you know when somebody plays Kentucky basketball is that they know the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's prioritized like football is in the South. And so that's one of the reasons why Coach Hamilton knows the game. You think about when Coach Rick Pitino was at Kentucky, when both he and I were coming up. You think about that style and system uh, he played. Uh, he is quote-unquote, a basketball junkie. Yeah, they won the state championship when he was at Scott County in 98. Runners up in 99. Blanton drives, has it redirected, but he's going to get a foul call. And if that's on Phillips, it is. That's his third. I, I was interested to see if he was actually shooting that. You think he was going to be a pass? A pass at the last second. In I fact, think it's a good call, yeah. yeah. The officials I, got together. I think he switched at the last second to go towards the pass versus the shot. Now, it could have been altered by the foul, and that's what I would be saying if I was Coach Hamilton and, and Blanton as well. Let's see. Shot there. No. Looks like it's, it's a shot. He's got hit on the arm. Tough break, East Kentucky. Hey, did you figure out if we're going to talk to one of uh, Barnes' former players? Got a surprise for you. you Got to hang around, though. Do you want you want a hit? Right, right about the right about the twelve minute mark. How about a first round point guard? What <laughs> that? A good early Christmas present for you. Volunteers by sixteen. I like the movement right now by Tennessee a little bit more. Now they, they got good man movement. There's that cut that time by Key. Pretty basketball. He's got nine. Plotchich picks up his second assist on that play. You know, with the 
shift in what the NBA thinks of big men and the opportunity to earn money when you're in college. And we've seen a, a reinvention of the five position. Another three for Key. That's his second of the game. The lead is 12. Not only do we get better big men, but like Uros Popchic, we get better passing big men in the game now. I would agree wholeheartedly. And right now, Eastern Kentucky says, hold that thought, Tom Hart. We're going to take a timeout down 21. Tennessee winning big. I'm a team mascot, and boy, am I running late. Barnes presented him with their SEC championship rings today. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. First blast by Coach Rick Barnes. Uh, both. Not not only it exemplifies what Coach Rick Barnes, but I think what the Tennessee Volunteers, how about a year that they had in football and basketball and uh, certainly in an upward trajectory in all sports here in Tennessee. More baseball team in the country. And by the way, second in the country in combined attendance for basketball between men's and women's. Fifth in the country overall in men's attendance at 16,722 a game. And, and we're not even at conference play yet. Rob for three. Nope. Rebound fought for. That is a man-sized rebound by Isaiah Kozar. Yeah, he went right at the enforcer that time. 6'7", 240-pound senior out of Richmond, Kentucky. Breaks a 10 to nothing run that Tennessee was on also. Yeah, first bucket of the second half for Eastern. Comer and Ziegler being separated. And it's actually Kamwai and Plop just kind of battling for that rebound. Again, we remind you that Eastern Kentucky, down 20 points in a Georgia State game, did not give up, able to come back and win a half-court shot at the buzzer. So one thing you'll know about Coach Hamilton's teams is that they will not quit. They'll continue to press. They'll continue to fight. And now Rob gets whistled for his fourth. He can't believe it. It was Ziegler cutting through and a technical on A.W. Hamilton. And with all due respect to Coach Hamilton, he's trying to stick up for his guy, Absolutely. Rob, who's got some tough, I'm not saying they're all bad, but tough whistles tonight. And as a player, that's one thing you love about your coach is when they continue to stand up for you. And put Key at the free throw line. Here's where he got whistled for the foul. And Rob's thinking that should be a, the guard version of a hook and hold that he got clamped down on. That's definitely a, a tough break. Had a great visit with Cooper today. He was All-State basketball, football, and baseball. And, Scott County High School won the Wawa Jones Award, one of the most versatile athletes in the state. He ran the wing tee offense in football. Oh, oh. Up above the rail. That was worth the price of admission. Wakes this crowd up a little bit, too. Walker up the feed from his buddy. That's off the mark. And Kamwa knocked it out of bounds. You know, it's almost like you get one of these in every game from Coach Rick Barnes on an out-of-bounds set and a nice screen that we talked about by Plofcic that allows Olivier Kamwa to get open for that dunk. What Coach Andy him. Kennedy call him? The, the specialties of uh, the special teams. The special teams. I, I, I've such been, a good point guard, man. Yeah, you I, saw I was hurting there. You just lifted me up. I appreciate that. Just like me, I know what it's like to get stuck in a mental cul-de-sac. <laughs> please, somebody find me an off ramp. Is on ramp for Kamwa up mm. above the rim with the jam. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started his business in 1929, he relied on four important values. Freshness, quality, variety, and service. 
I'm proud to carry on his legacy, but from a bigger space. We still freshly roast, season, and dip delicious nuts here in New Jersey and deliver them with the freshest dried fruits, snacks, and sweets to families that love our products all around the country, including mine. We think you'll love nuts.com too. So check us out and enjoy free shipping on your first order. Hi, Dan. What's up, Linda? You around for the 2 p.m. production meeting? My calendar's up to date. Did you check? Yeah, I checked, but every hour is blocked off as dame time, so I wasn't sure. It's always dame time. So are you going to the production meeting? Two o'clock? Nah, that dame time happens to be lunchtime today. Sorry. Oh. Infinity pool in the back. Your chick want to fool with a Mac? Come on. Stupid thing. Fall. AJ, what's the problem here? Oh, hey, Becky. Candy bar is stuck. Can you help me out? Stuck, huh? Mm. Yeah, I think I can help you out. Mm. Hi, facilities. Yeah, we're going to need some assistance on the third floor vending machine. Thanks. There you go, buddy. Thanks, Becky. When you get a chip in your windshield, trust Safe Life. This couple was headed to the farmer's market. When they got a chip, they drove to Safe Life for a same-day repair. And with their insurance, it was no cost to them. That service the way you need it. Safe Life Repair, Safe Life Replace. Research. For more information, visit ESPN.com slash V-Week. What a great moment last night with Dickie V, Dan Shulman, and all the money raised. Thanks to the V Foundation last night, and everyone is impacted. A.W. Hamilton, a couple of years ago, was implored to go get a physical. He hadn't had one since he played at Marshall because his brother-in-law and assistant coach, Steve Laporte, had a health scare. So he went into the doctor and said, oh, yeah, I've got this mole behind my ear. They find out it's melanoma. That had run in the family, and he said, I, I have to sit and wait and find out my diagnosis, and it's going to take a long time. He said, I was so blessed to be home in eastern Kentucky, to be surrounded by family, to have that support staff nearby, to go through such a, a stressful and traumatic process. I thought his perception was was overall just breathtaking and uh, everything that you mentioned, and, and, as well as the V Foundation, right? You think about ESPN and being the leader in, wild, in worldwide of sports, but the job that Coach Valvano did uh, you think about Stuart Scott. You think about those speeches, never getting up, the money that has been raised. That's a legacy as much of, of ESPN as well. Dickie V deserves so much credit for that. Leland Walker has one more coming in our company to give him the platform and support to continue to use him as the face of it, especially after his own battles. Walker has eight. So we see a little different pressure now. This is a 2-2-1, two, two, but still looking to be aggressive, but they really want to. Oh, they don't want that. That's how you attack the press. Tennessee in a shoot-around today knew that they could take advantage of the soft spots in the zone, and those soft spots would happen near the rim with their bigs. You know, what's impressive is that they worked on this in practice, and it didn't start out looking this good. Uh, but what Coach Rick Barnes did amidst the practice was he changed their mindset. He changed them from being timid and passive to being aggressive and wanting to attack the pressure. That is a third assist for Plavchic. Ziegler draws a double. Kamal was waiting to set a screen. Key for three. And a rebound to Easter. This is Tayshaun Comer. Gives it up. Nice. Yeah, great transition bucket by Devontae Blanton. He's their leading scorer, Fish. That's his first field goal of the night. And then Ziegler draws the push on Comer. That's his third. Well, defensively, that's a given when you when you face the, the Tennessee Volunteers. And so uh, you have to be prepared when you face them offensively. You know, if you're just running ball screens or just passing the basketball, trying to use a dribble drive, it's going to be tough to get by the Volunteers. Turner Buttry checks in. When Rob picked up that foul, 
on Ziegler's cut a few minutes ago. That was his fifth. The technical was his fifth. I thought Hamilton had picked up the technical. Well, Zakai should have a good homecoming as the team departs for Brooklyn on Friday. Have you been to the Nets practice facility? They'll use that's usually where they'll get a chance to practice. I have not. Tell it me is, about it. It has a stunning view of Manhattan. Floor to ceiling windows on one side of the gym. It's up on about the eighth floor of the warehouse district in Brooklyn. There's a finish by Blanton. He's got back to back buckets. He'll take your breath away. I've never seen a view like that out of a gym. Here's Adu with the left. You know you are a New York type of guy, Tom. It's concrete jungle where dreams are made of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. I mean, some have, some have Sinatra, others have. <laughs> That's really good. A little cold for me, though. Leland Walker trying to shake Meshack. Left his feet. Shot clock at six. Lanton spins. He's starting to feel it a little bit. Pretty basketball. You sure? Good look. You coach Hamilton, you don't mind that. This is the end where they have to do a better job. Right now, Tennessee's showing us that that offensive efficiency is improving in the second half. Rebound by Kozar. Set up. Kentucky prep record with 716 blocks in his high school career. You got to be active to put up those numbers. James commits his third personal. You know, we talked about health being one of the critical components for Tennessee in winning yep. a national championship. Let's remember in this game, as we judge the offensive efficiency of the Tennessee Volunteers, they have yet to be really whole and complete. Josiah Jordan-James out, Plofchich out, Vescovy out. I think once this team gets together, their offense will start clicking much better. I got a health story that's going to warm your heart, and SEC fans may have lost track of this, but... Keontae Johnson, who collapsed for Florida in a game against Florida State a few years ago and wasn't allowed to return to the floor at Florida after being the preseason SEC player of the year, is back. And he's playing for Kansas State. He's averaging 18 points, six boards, shooting 50% from three. He missed two years with that heart issue. Yep. And last time we saw him, he was always in great spirits, but he was in shoot-around and sweatpants and flip-flops, just kind of getting up some shots. That, that's all he was limited to. So great to see him back on the floor, back in good health. Absolutely. You think about the patience that he had to exemplify and the poise and uh, just the courage that it takes to get back out on that floor. Uh, it's simply sensational. Key's not got, got another free throw coming. I think he actually is the one that, if I'm not mistaken, made the last second shot to beat LSU. Give LSU their only loss this season, too. How about that? Have you seen Mississippi State yet this year? Whew, have I? <laughs> Coach Jans in the building. There's Lena Walker with the pull up. He's in double figures. What has Mississippi State shown you so far through the non conference that you think they can continue to cash in on during conference play? Sure. We're talking about the defense of Tennessee right now, uh, the defense of Mississippi State, and the culture uh, that Coach Jans has built in a very short period of time has been nothing less than sensational. Uh, the way that and Tolo, Tolu Smith, by the way, Western Kentucky transfer, is healthy. He's playing that way. Uh, when I traveled around to see those guys practice, I thought Mississippi State was as athletic as anyone in the Southeast or Eastern Conference. That? They do struggle to shoot from the perimeter, but when they make shots, they can compete with anybody in the country. I guess some dudes can play above the rim, right? Mm. Ziegler at the free throw line, 77% on the season. Product of Immaculate Conception, Long Island. Tennessee's had some great ones from New York. How about Ernie and Bernie? Tobias Harris, Kevin Punter. That guy could score. 
Yukamato left his feet, and he commits another. That is number four for Yukamato. I feel like it's getting time, Tom. Time for what? Time for us to, you know, talk about the guy, right? You talk about all the great point guards. You know, Coach Rick Barnes has had phenomenal point guards over his career. you got to have, right, quality coaches on the floor. Yeah. And one of the best ones that he has had is coming to sit down with us after the break. We'll let you guess which one it's going to be off of this list. Well, it's here. not Ziegler, and uh, Kennedy's probably busy. So we can probably scratch those guys off, right? A, B, or C. A, B, C, or D, huh? Yeah. I always – pretty good ACT score for a guy that didn't study. I always went with C. <laughs> I don't know if that's right in this in, in instance, but – is it, it was C. I think it switched to B now. This is much better offense. Don't know if he called that off the glass, but it looked good. Banked it in. Well, that, you mentioned the first half of the upside for Jonas Adu. It's just next level, right? 6'11". Yeah, I think the combination of both him and Ploftich actually give each other versatility uh, in different ways. Uh Jonas is much faster when it comes to rim to rim running, shoots it better from the perimeter. Plofchich is much better on the interior, stronger, more physical. James offers the screen, and Key lost it on the way in. A Tom Amansky video this is not, especially on the <laughs> offensive end. Volunteers at 32%, Eastern at 22%. Combined five for 43 from three-point land. We mentioned teams like Jay Wright's Villanova teams that won national championships. And, and Virginia and Coach Tony Bennett, when you get behind those teams, it's so hard to come back. Mm -hmm. That's what Tennessee reminds me of. Buttry commits his third personal foul. It's a 55-31 lead coming up. Let's talk guard play with Rick Barnes. Introduce you to one of his former greats, the first rounder that wore the orange, the burnt orange variety after this. Top Academy Sports and Outdoors three-day online-only sale and get up to 50% off the best brands. Buy online and pick up in-store. Shop with confidence with our price match guarantee. Plus, get free shipping on most orders over $25. This three-day sale ends Wednesday, so visit academy.com now. The Bedroom Suite. With deliberate details and modern functionality. For the indoor enthusiast. Check in at Thuma.co. To your power. Let's go. Ah, you didn't come to work out. You came to outwork. Let's get it. Yo. Boom. Do the do the score. Come on, oh, you got this. this. Every day, man, for the hey. block. No challenge, beat. no change. The thing goes. Let's go. Let's get a kick. Get up to two hundred dollars off accessories. Terms apply. Show the world what it means to be an SEC fan at Fanatics.com. The largest assortment of officially licensed SEC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want with all the entertainment you love for the price that cable can't be. Try free at FuboTV.com. Hey, welcome back, Tennessee, with a 24-point lead. We promised you one of Rick Barnes' great point guards. He's had so many, so many of them. First-round pick, T.J. Four from Texas, Big 12 freshman of the year, led the nation in assists your freshman year. What was your transition like? You were so good right off the bat, going from high school to play for a very demanding coach in Rick Barnes. 
Well, I came into college. I came in hurt with an injury with my spinal stenosis where I discovered that I had this this, this health problem. So uh, I, I think when it came to me coming to college during the summertime, I didn't really get the workout. I was doing a lot of testing. But uh, it just allowed me to take a lot of time to really watch the players on our team and really just continue to, you know, really have to trust Coach Barnes because we was doing some major, major, you know, going to seeing doctors and, and trying to see. Because I, I was supposed to have surgery. Yeah. And, uh Part of that story is I probably called him about 12 o'clock at night and told him I felt like I was healthy, and he just said, okay, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, uh, you know, college, it was, a, it was a major transition for me, um, being in Texas, having the hype of, of changing the program. And, um, but that's what I wanted. And uh, Coach Barnes had a vision when he came to my home and uh, what we could do at the University of Texas at that time, and we was able to accomplish that. Well, she is – as challenging then as we see him now, I feel like he was probably more challenging one-on-one. -on -one. And, and I don't want to say he's softened over the years, but he's always been a very intense coach. And as a younger coach, even more so. Well, I, look, I, th I mean, the big thing tonight, you know, his principles are still the same. He's going to yeah. be demanding defensively. He's still going to want you to do all the things uh, that goes into winning, you know, not turning the ball over, being sure. able to rebound, uh, being physical. So that nature of his style. Um, you know, after 30 plus years of still doing it, man, he still got the same energy, the same passion, and still getting the best out of all of his players. Now, there was a time that he told me about a story where you actually were giving him some advice during the game. Tell us about that story. What happened? Well, one of the main stories, man, we was playing Oklahoma his senior night, and uh, you know, Oklahoma was a was a tough matchup for us. So they they really was difficult. Uh, Final Four championship type team, and when we really think about it, man, uh, Brian Bodica was, was we was struggling, but I, I needed a guy that could pick and pop. Yeah, and uh, I, I just told him, man, you got to put him back in. He's like, you got to be kidding me. There's no way I put him in. I was like, I guess you don't want to win. And uh, he put Bodica back in, man, in the second half. And he came right off the bench, man, hit a big-time three-fours, and that gave me momentum because I, I, I knew what I needed to be able to attack to win that game, and I knew I had to go score the basketball the last, you know, 10, 12 minutes of the game, and I was able to do that, but I, I needed, I needed Boddicker. And I remember you, they said you reminded him of that after the game. Well. <laughs> no, you're, you're a great coach, baby. <laughs> what is it about the coach-player relationship in, in that instance, and we see it with his guys at Tennessee now, that are comfortable enough with him to not just offer suggestions but almost challenge him in some way? I mean, listen, the coach has his view from the side, yeah. right? And but when you out here on this court, just like it's things he's going to see from the side, being being in between these lines, it's a different feel sometimes as a player we're going to have that that coach can't feel out there. Uh, so for me uh, and, and Coach Bourne, we was able to have that 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 conversation that we can have throughout the game because it's, it's not the same pace. It's not the same energy the entire, you know, 20, 40 minutes you're out there. Uh, and that conversation for me is, is I play the game in, in segments, you know. So that, that's how I play, sure. you know, in, in segments. I, I knew the way I started the game is not how I was going to end up in the middle of the game. So I, I kind of had a strategy coming into every game. And it, it, it would change based on, you know, who we playing against. And you're still involved with the game now. So, so what are you doing that still has you involved with basketball now, TJ? Man, you know, I retired in 2012, you know, just unexpectedly with my, my injury and just been involved with youth sports ever since then. So just, you know, training and, and doing AAU and developing kids from third grade all the way up to, to high school. We put a lot of kids in college. Uh, I put a lot of kids in the NFL yeah. uh, coming through my program. We have put a, 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 we got some guys that's close, you know, getting to the G League. Um, and then in the summertime, you know, I, I have my own gym and own facility, so I'm able to work out a lot of pros now. James Harden was one of the guys uh, that's in and out of our gym a lot in the summertime, giving kids a lot of wisdom. So nice. uh, it, it's just been great. That's how I stay connected to the game, and, man, I, I just love it. TJ Ford played for Rick Barnes at Texas, and, and you got a chance when Tennessee went back to Austin last year to spend a little bit of time around the program, and specifically Kennedy Chandler. And, and when they got back on that trip, Coach Barnes kept telling us, how much you helped Kennedy in that moment, whether it was frustration or just learning how to play for Coach Barnes. How did you help him? Well, we have, me and Barnes got that relationship. When you get these top players like that and, and guards and they have that expectation of getting to the NBA, um, right away, as soon as these guys, uh, you know, commit to the university, I, I, I get engaged with those guys. And Kennedy was one guy that I was just texting uh, not too long ago. I'm just helping to go through it. You know, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of pressure, man, when you have your family there that you, you can change everybody's lives. But when yeah. you come in here, you can't rush the process. College basketball is not as easy as everybody think it is. Uh, you, you're playing against older players. You're playing against guys 
uh, that are coming at you when you get to these type of universities. So I mean, when you look at Kennedy, Kennedy came to Austin. He was doing a little stretch where he was struggling and just kind of second-guessing himself. And at the end of the day, it was just giving him the confidence to understand, like, you know, being a big-time player, that's what you want. Yeah. You wanted those expectations. That's why you're here. Uh, and you just got to embrace it. And you're not going to play a full season perfect. It's impossible. So just let him know, you know, I went to a, a – you know, every – Every year I played basketball, I went to a period where I struggled. And you just got to, uh, you know, you got to embrace your struggle. You got to just keep working, and um, you got to just stick to the fundamental things that it takes. And that's why I was able to help him get back to because those players depended on his leadership. And, you know, he was real down, and I just had to be able to pick him up because, you know, he wasn't just affecting himself. He was affecting the whole team uh, by just not being as, as confident. One thing I want to hook into that is really interesting. It's, it's, it's not uncommon for guys to help their former schools. Rick Barnes is no longer at Texas, but you're still working with him and helping him with his current guys. I, mean, I think it's really interesting that you're there to offer support because he meant so much to you. In that regard, when you watch Zakai Ziegler now for a second year, you got that point guard look. What, what do you see when you watch Zakai Ziegler play? Oh, man, he was a force last year. He won a lot of games for us. He was able to come off the bench and now being in a role where um, it's a leader. Uh, you know, obviously uh, – what he brings to the table is so valuable that this team needs. Uh, and they depend on him. I think tonight uh, he started off a little little slow and a little kind of decisive, but uh, I think overall he was able to pick it up. And, you know, look, he was able to get his team uh, what he needed. Uh, now, did, did I hear you correctly? You say he won a lot of games for us? Yeah. For, Ooh, for sure. that's a relationship sure. right there. I he's love a, that. He won a lot of games. I mean, he, he was big. You know, Kennedy was the – the main force, he was the headliner, but that guy there came in and, you know, he was able to settle things down and coming off the bench and, and affecting the game in a different way. Um, I mean, he was a big, he's a big part of Kennedy being in the NBA. And I think you got to have that. And when you look at Rick Barnes, I mean, he's a two-head guard uh, type, of, type of coach. You know, right. he needs two of them. So, uh, yeah, he, he, he was huge. Now he has a, a different responsibility this season. Um, he's doing a good job. He's got to just keep getting better and uh, just keep working. Rick Barnes in one word. Man, just winner. Woo! Can't winner. say it any better than that. Winner. I imagine he'd say the same thing about you. I, I know he was so proud when you got your degree in 2017. What was it like to be next well, to Well, it was there? a difficult task, man. You know, we was going back and forth of which way that I should be able to get my degree. I had you know, three plus years. <laughs> You know, three real full years of it's going like back. It's not like you had three hours. <laughs> no, man, I was a real, real student. So, you know, going through the process and just, you know, buckling down and just having to just get it done. And, you know, he was a huge force of, of keeping my confidence and being able to do it because at that time, you know, I retired. I didn't know what was next. I had a family going back and forth and, and actually physically had to be in class. But I thought it was one of the best decisions uh, that I had to make, not only just for myself, but to be able to finish off, uh, you know, the standard off the basketball yeah. to off the court of, of education. Well, I know he's really proud of you. Thanks for stopping by. You continue to recruit for him. And your Texas team's in the top five, too. Pretty good run. Oh, man. Hey, UT, UT, baby. <laughs> That's TJ Ford. The volunteer is up 62-39. Are you a good student? Interested in attending college but need help? Each year, the Jimmy Rain Foundation gives scholarships to worthy students pursuing a college education. So if you're a high school senior or age 20 or younger, and in your first two years of college, you are encouraged to apply. More than 550 students have already received scholarships, and the next one could be yours. Applications will only be available at JimmyRainFoundation.org. try looking at the perfect place a place with gifts that light up a face as well as a room where it's easy to find the brands they'll love and the advice you trust that place is your local lace around the block what you need in stock with people who know their gifts get our best price ever by saving 180 dollars on a weber genesis 2 and ace rewards members get free assembly and delivery on new grills ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks 
And I said, Sarah Day, no one's here. Like, are you getting this? You get so if he wants the end, water it doesn't have to be boring. Turn it up with Circle. With over 40 delicious flavors and a dial that controls your intensity, Circle starts a party for your taste buds. No sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavors. Just good times. Circle, it's your water, your way. Try Circle at drinkcircle.com. 62-39, great visit with T.J. Ford. He played for Rick Barnes. Texas is a first-round pick in that loaded draft with LeBron going first overall in 2003, uh, the Bucks. He was the first freshman to lead the NCAA in assists. He averaged eight and a third assists a game on a Sweet 16 Texas team. But you, you hooked on to something he said when he referred to Rick Barnes' Tennessee team as we. What yeah. does that say about Barnes' relationship with former players? Father, son, you know, something that uh, you can't really put a statement on. Uh, he, he looks at Coach Rick Barnes' and his family. So wherever Coach Rick Barnes is, that's where his alliance will be as well. That's pretty cool. Julian Phillips with 14 points. Tyreek Key has three. Tayshaun Comer. Well, we're talking TJ picked up his fifth and fouled out. So Jackson Holt, freshman from Cincinnati, getting some run here for Eastern here in the second half. Tennessee's turned up the defense. Good look inside. Plopich got a hand in the small of the back, which is why he got called for that foul. And you see Eastern Kentucky trying to come back and attack points in the paint. And that looks pretty clean to me, candidly. But Tennessee has certainly did what we talked about earlier. Just dominated points in the paint. Uh, 26 to 18, not as much, but the second chance points, that's been the difference. Plus 11, 21 to 10. Yeah. That was the first foul on Plopchic. And Isaiah Cozart has another one coming his way. This is what you have to like about Eastern Kentucky and Coach Hamilton. Their style, their energy, their conditioning, their effort hasn't quit <laughs> the entire game. And that's what Zakai should have been doing the entire game. Uh -huh. Instead of waiting and trying to get guys on his back, use your speed and quickness and just run through the press. That's what T.J. Ford likes Zakai Ziegler style so much, huh? <laughs> Thought that was interesting, too. And his number retired at Texas. It's not something they do much of in any sport. He went down, and he is grabbing his right knee. And it actually looks more like his quad. Hope, hopefully it's just a cramp. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Walker throws in the three. We love athletic trainer Chad Newman. We just don't like seeing him on the floor. Sure. Tyreek was a standout at Clay County High School. You know, Tom Sokoviak had a great nugget in their notes. He was a, an elite scorer in high school. He was a 3,000-point scorer, one of only 22 in Tennessee prep history. But in the state tournament, he averaged 43 points, 13 boards, and five assists a game. Whew. That is carrying your team. From Salina, Tennessee, and went to Terre Haute to play at Indiana State. You get your name on a sign outside of town. You don't have big that time. I, I was assuming. Oh, that. My, my picture is up in the post office. Okay, okay. <laughs> we did something like that. And it looks like, obviously, we don't want to assume, but. Well, you're halfway there. Go ahead. Just looks like that quad starting to cramp up a little bit, especially the way he's walking. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want it to.
tighten up anymore. He's able to put plenty of pressure on it. You see the trainer just massaging it. You're right. I was halfway there, so I figured I'd go ahead and run through the finish line. It's that kind of night, Tom. Eastern Kentucky deciding to go to the matchup zone. They haven't really used as much as their man-to-man -man pressure. It's actually what they used to come back in the Georgia State game. More of an uphill battle here tonight. Julian Woo! Phillips rips the net from the corner. He's got 17. He only made three threes coming in all season, able to knock one down here. Loose ball. Ziegler has it. Two on one. Here's Ziegler to keep. And credit Kamal with the tip, I suppose. Wow, what a save by Ziegler. Blind pass, and Kamal's got another. A little pressure of their own by the Volunteers. The Moreno's hit some big shots tonight. That one was short. Money, money, money. This is seven point outburst in the last 45 seconds, led by Ziegler. Bob just shovels it to him. He's going to share it again. Shot clock at four. Ziegler for three. Nice. He's come a long way. When I came to watch him practice, you know, right before the season started, he looked a little comfortable, right? Kennedy Chandler's gone, just kind of assumed this position is mine. It wasn't like he wasn't playing hard, but he wasn't quite as hungry. You know, to your point, that was a battle last year, sure. each and every day, and it, I feel like it made both of them better. Absolutely. Versus this year, the position's already mine. Coach Rick Barnes, he's the leader on this team, and after that Colorado game, I give Coach Barnes credit for not only making him come off of the bench, but Zakai for reaching out to Coach Rick Barnes and saying, what do I need to do to get better? That's the kind of accountability and love that you want going on within your basketball program. Popsich got the rebound. Tennessee on a 10 nothing run. Eastern shooting just 22% tonight. Tennessee fourth in the country in points allowed per game. Number one in Ken Palm defensive efficiency. And the field goal percentage defense coming in at 34.5. That's third best in the country. And if this trend holds, it's going to go down even further. 76-43. Tennessee's got it on cruise control now. Around here, Saturdays don't just happen. Saturdays are in the details. It takes the X's, the O's, and the T's. The bounces, the flips, and the flights. The bulldog, the bear, and the beads of sweat. It takes this moment and this moment. When anything can happen, every detail counts. Pfizer and the SEC are teaming up to remind fans to get an updated COVID-19 booster shot. Tommy John this holiday season. Choose feature-packed underwear and intimates to upgrade your day every day. Try them now risk-free with our best pair guarantee and experience what confidence feels like. Go to TommyJohn.com now and get 20% off your first order with code TV20. Time for our Mayhem Moment brought to you by Allstate. It's Olivier Kamwa. Well, Olivier Kamwa, who's 
I thought before he goes down with the ankle injury last year versus South Carolina was on his way to be coming Grant Williams like. I, I feel like he's got just an incredible upside. Uh, played with the Finland national team this summer, so was able to get confidence back. Uh, but I, I still am looking for him to take that next step. We talked about having a tough shot maker when they get into postseason play. He's certainly one of those guys that has that potential. Uh, he's still trying to figure it out in between the ears, but he's gaining confidence, high basketball IQ. I think it's just confidence that's really keeping him from going to the next level, as is that guy number two in white, Julian Phillips. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Grant Williams in this series history with Eastern, he had a pretty good one last time these teams met. That was an absolutely loaded Tennessee team. That was 2018 Tennessee won 95 67 Grant had 21 and 11 with five assists Admiral Schofield had 20 points Those players that Roster that was the foundation of what Rick Barnes has continued to build Yep, and I always remember the first time I came to his practice and I said, you know a lot of expectations coach Barnes said a lot of people or excited about how you're going to get it done. And he said two things. Oh, I'm going to get it done, and I'm going to do it the right way. And with so many coaches around college basketball doing it in different ways, I think you would agree, and everyone who discusses Coach Rick Barnes would agree, that he has gotten it done the right way. You know, they took full advantage of his recruiting prowess, and a lot of it made a, has been made of what the Tennessee football program has been able to accomplish with the NIL money that they put together, and, and rightfully so. That's that's a part of while recruiting inducements are shouldn't be part of it. That is a part of recruiting and program strength these days. And I ran into another SEC staff this fall when we're on the road for football. We're talking about their ability to bring some of this talent in, including Julian Phillips. And he paid Rick Barnes the ultimate compliment. And he said, listen, don't let that grandfatherly exterior fool you. <laughs> Rick Barnes, he quoted, is an absolute assassin on the recruiting trail. Yep. And he's proven that. Right? Phillips is fourth McDonald's All-American. Do you think that the competition level for guys, head coaches in the college game, is the same on the recruiting trail from an intensity level as it is on game night? Oh, absolutely. Because when you're rebuilding a program, as Coach Rick Barnes has done, as Coach Musselman, Coach Pearl, Coach Oates, uh, when you're rebuilding a program, it starts with your ability to recruit. Yeah. Uh, you have to continue that with engaging your fan base. You know, you have to develop your own identity and continue to build your culture over time. But if you don't have players, I don't care how good of a coach you are. It's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy's and Joe's. Well, here's a Jackson. Jackson Holt, second team All-State <laughs> from Raven Prep in Cincinnati. And here's a look at some SEC rebuilds with Pearl's able to do on the Plains. And then with Rick's done here in Knoxville. And Eric Musselman, three straight 21 seasons, back-to-back -back Elite Eights. Nate Oates at Alabama. Well, you know, you look at that. Two NCAA tournaments between 2006 and 2019, and now he's going back-to-back. -back and I would be shocked if they don't go this year with Brandon Miller and, and company. Um, so the rebuilds have went into effect and what's happened in the SEC over the last five to seven years has been sensational. What a turnaround. And I thought on the recruiting trail it, it has kind of come to its head in the most this freshman class. More top five or more five star recruits I should say as Plotkin goes with the jump hook than any other conference. Whew. And and you mentioned they're littered throughout the conference. It's not just for example Kentucky pulling in a bunch of one and dones and everybody else struggling to keep up. Right. Well, and I think that actually is a it's a positive, but at times it is a challenge because offensively they haven't quite gotten to where as Popchich once again the enforcer offensively the SEC hasn't quite gotten over the top. 
Elite Eights, Sweet Sixteens, Final Fours. But offensively, it's it's such an NBA style in the Southeastern Conference because you have so many NBA players. Uh, but on the collegiate level, I think at times the offense can get stagnant, and that's where this league has to continue to cultivate themselves offensively to get to that next level. Tennessee finds the offensive rebound. Lobchich going tough again. And he'll get another trip to the free throw line. I was talking about the toughness of Urosh Lobchic. We were talking politics late in the year last year. We are talking about his home country and everything he's been through. During the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, which look that one up on your history books, it lasted two months, two weeks, and three days from March 24th to June 10th of 99. His mom was pregnant with him at the time. She spent, along with many of the other citizens, just about every day in a bomb shelter while the home country was being bombed. And he said, you know, the things that... So luckily I didn't really live through it. I was just I was just there with my mom. But the th thing that that family has been through, and, sure. and now he's here counting his blessings, playing SEC basketball... Life can take you on some funny twists and turns, huh? Well, it, it's when I went over there after finishing in 2000, 2001, they still were actually turning off the power in Belgrade mm. for hours during the day to try to save power. So it would, it, if it was a dark time of the year, it could be pitch black from 3 o'clock to 3 a.m. the next day because they were conserving power at wow. the time. It's not something that just lasted for a few months. No, it? not at all. Minute to play. Tennessee up 82 to 46. One minute remaining. Volunteers are going to go to 8 1 on this season. This will be their 22nd consecutive Ooh. victory. Beautiful move by Jamay Meshek. Jamay's got six now. Known for his defense. Ranking 12th nationally in his steal percentage, but I think offensively he has an impeccable upside. A couple of standouts in this one, including Julian Phillips, who's got a double-double, 16 points and 10 boards. Buttry, and it lives up to the name. 5'11", freshman drains a triple. Coming up in a moment, we'll get you to Pitt and Vandy. I was with Dane last night in Fayetteville. He's now home on his couch, getting ready to work that one. Here's Ziegler. Left it short. Somehow Ziegler ended up with that one after Kobe Owaka had the rebound. Clock will run out on Eastern Kentucky, Tennessee. A dominant second half, outscoring the Colonels 52 to 28 since the break. Nice greeting between A.W. Hamilton and Rick Barnes. Volunteers, seventh in the country, now eight and one. Time to get you to Nashville and on the West End, where Vanderbilt is meeting up with Pitt. And the call, Roy Philpott along with Dane Bradshaw. Basically took a two-year hiatus to transfer to Iowa State. And then now at Pitt, doing a great job. Well, welcome those now tuning in on SEC Network, Pittsburgh and Vanderbilt. For those that were watching, Tennessee dismantling Eastern Kentucky. Just underway in Nashville. 2-0 our score. A couple of